Welcome back to the woodland on this very chilly winter's day. We hope you're well, we hope you're staying safe, and we hope you enjoy the activity that we have for you today. We've got a bit of a make for you today. Now, as I said, we're in winter. We're in the middle of winter as I'm filming this, and it's starting to get its icy fingers really into the environment around us and really get nice and chilly. And it's a nice time that very often we tend to slow down, spend more time indoors, and I know we are anyway, keep nice and warm and wrap up and just take things nice and gentle. But something that cannot take things nice and gentle this time of year is our birds. Our birds are flying around desperately trying to find food. Normally the fruits and seeds and nuts and even the insects that our birds eat are all less available this time of year. So we're going to give them a hand and I'm going to show you how you can do that at home. We're going to make a bird feeder. Now to do this, you're going to need a milk bottle or some other plastic bottle, ideally with the top still on. You're going to need something that you can cut with. So here I have my nice sharp pair of scissors. And of course, warning here, if you're going to be using sharp scissors, make sure that an adult is either with you or has said it's okay for you to use them unsupervised. But ideally, you'll probably want to do this first time supervised. Whenever I'm using a sharp tool, I'm always thinking about looking after my hands and keeping them safe. And I have a glove here that I'm gonna use on my helper hand when I use my sharp cutting tool. Other things we're gonna need is some string. Here's some I've already cut for hanging our bird feeder. We are also going to need something to feed the birds. So I have in here a bird mix. This is a wild bird mix and it's full of all the things that they're going to need. So in here I've got seeds, I've got nuts, I've also got some mealworms which is some dried insects that our birds like to eat. I've also got, for some of you, you might have at home a drill. Now this is a palm drill and it's something that we use on forest school. Now, you don't have to use this, but this might make some of our jobs a little bit easier to start with. But I'm gonna show you, oh, we also have a lot of wind today. I'm gonna to show you how to do it without this. One final thing that you might like just to top it off to make it really homely for our birds is a nice straight stick, but you don't have to have this. So I'm gonna start first with my scissors, which means I'm going to put on my glove just to protect my helper hand. I don't put a glove on the hand that's going to use the scissors because it will make using the tool difficult. So just going to pop off the lid and put that to one side. Now I'm going to take the long side and I'm going to flatten it like this. This will enable me to get a good cut with my scissors just like this. Taking my scissors and making sure that my fingers are clear, I can see where they are and they're protected, I'm gonna make a cut in the bottom third of this milk bottle. So round about here. Just like that. So now I've got a little slit, but I want to be able to get in there and cut round in a circle. Now there's a couple of ways I could do it. I could just trim round in a circle or even a semicircle, and then open it up, or I can do this, which is my preferred way. Because this bottle's clean, I'm gonna blow in it, but I'm gonna pinch my slit first. Watch this. Ta-da! Now, taking my scissors, I'm gonna go into the slit that I've just made, and I'm gonna cut along and start working around either a square or a circle. It's up to you. And don't worry if it's not a clean square or circle or rectangle or whatever shape you're going for, because you can always tidy it up after. Get my hand in there. I'm opening it up now. You can see I've got this window I've made, but I want to take it off now. So making sure I can see all my fingers and I've still got my hand gloved, I can work across here just like that. So just so you can see, I've now got a window at the front. Now that's where we're gonna put the bird seed a little later on. 
Now I'm going to keep my glove on because my hand's going to be in this sharp bit of plastic and I don't want it to scratch or to cut me. But I'm going to now put on my lid back up the top there. Just like that. Now I could just put my string on through there See here the wind look at the effects of the wind at the moment yeah so you might find that when you hang this in your tree or bird table wherever you're going to put it that you might want to put something heavy in the bottom first and then put the seeds in and look now the wind started to drop a little bit but i think it's going to build up i've already had my palm drill roll off the table so i'm going to go and get that now so now to make a knot all i have to do is make a loop, pass the string all the way around, up through the loop and pull it tight. So now I'm going to make a hole in the bottom for my stick to go through. And to do that you could use your scissors just as I showed you at the beginning by cutting at the bottom there but I'm going to have a go with my palm drill. I'm now going to place my palm drill on there and you can see that my fingers are a long way away from where the palm drill is going to come through and all I do is start to push and turn. Eventually it will start to drill through the plastic but when it goes it usually goes quite quickly. There you go. So if my fingers were behind that that obviously would be quite painful. So by me wearing my glove I protect myself just in case. So now I've made my hole with my palm drill. I'm going to put my stick through. Now it might need me to adjust it. I might need to make my hole a bit bigger, but I can just get it in. Now, that's far, far, far too big and it will just cause my feeder to tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off that little bit there. To do that, I'm going to use the edge of my tape. There we go. Now the last thing we might want to do, and it's a really good idea, is to put some holes in the bottom, but some very small, thin holes that won't allow the seed to fall through. The reason we have that is because if any rainwater gets in through the front window of our feeder, it'll allow it to drain away. Now I'm going to do that using my scissors, just to make little slits to allow the water out. So flattening the bottom, a little snip of the plastic, and I have a little slit. Place my tool down, I change to the other side, and I put a little slit in as well. Remembering that all the time I've got my glove on and I can see all my fingers before I cut. Right, I think we're about ready now. Now you might have to be patient before birds start to come to your feeder because they have to get used to knowing that there's a food source there. But when they come, they'll start coming in lots and lots and lots of different colors, shapes and sizes. So you might want to invest in a bird identification book or maybe a chart. You can look up on the internet, but definitely I would think about getting yourselves a pair of binoculars because it really brings those birds up close and gives you a chance to enjoy them whilst they're having their dinner and they don't know that you're watching them. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you get the best out of that feeder. Bye-bye.